Hello, my lovelies. I'm Ginny O, the author with no last name, and this is Ginny O Reviews, the part of the channel where I review an independent science fiction or fantasy book. I'm finally trying out the camera my dad gave me for Christmas. You can finally see my face and me being my goth self. My options seem to be pasty and pale at night, so you can see my blinds, or pasty and pale during the day with a huge white square behind me. We'll see how this goes. I'm not sure how often I'll be able to commit to using it given my health. I will most likely only use it for review videos, because no one wants to see me reading, right? Beware, I talk with my hands. I'm also reading from a transcript. I'm sorry if that seems a bit obvious, but I haven't gotten the hang of doing this off the cuff. This week, I'm reviewing The Call of Chaos by Sean R. Fraser, a fantasy adventure. You can find Sean on Twitter at the Clapton Train or at his website, seanrfraser.com. From the back of the book. Exiled from his homeland, Corel Silvermoon was left to roam without direction. Bestowed with unimaginable power by the awakening threads, he struggles to understand his purpose. But when he discovers that terrible forces are tearing the realm asunder, Corel realizes that no one can withstand the storm alone. Forced to confront the mythical monsters that pillage the land, he faces a realm that has become much deadlier, encountering new friends, dangerous enemies, and impossible challenges. Can Corel and his friends discover the source of the chaos and stop it? Or will they be forced to watch as everything they know and love is utterly destroyed, ushering in a new age of danger and discord? Friendship alert! I'm friends with Sean on Twitter. We've interacted occasionally, but I'd classify him as an acquaintance. He's much better at ship posting than I am, and his cat, Thor, will one day defeat the refrigerator. I note. I believe in you, Thor. Let's get right into it, shall we? Did I like this book, and why? I really enjoyed this book, and there were parts I found amusing, and other parts I found fascinating. I'm giving it four ginger snaps. And I think in this instance, the blurb of this book really does it a disservice, because it focuses so much on Corel, and the book doesn't revolve around Corel as much as the blurb would make you think it does. So I think the blurb gives this book the wrong impression. The Call of Chaos is an adventure book about a journey building up towards a destination and every major character, and I'd say there were three of them, but at least two others have important roles now and hopefully later, plays their part in the journey. The story builds and builds towards the end and I turn pages to see if the characters would meet and where they would go next and what interesting thing they would see. As I was reading, I was comparing it in my head to Alan Dean Foster's Journey of the Catechist, where the journey, what they do on the journey, what they see is in a way more important than the destination of the journey. If you go into this book expecting a crisis point near the middle and everything to be focused on the coming age of one character, you're going to be disappointed. If you come to this as this is a story about how a group of D&D &D characters are meeting each other to form a party and get their MacGuffins, and the end of the book is just the beginning of the story, you'll be flipping pages and chomping at the bit to buy the next book. Each character is having their individual sessions with the DM. Their paths are crossing a bit, and then parting. There's a lot of fighting, there are many questions asked, and not all of them are answered, but the important ones are. You're traveling through this land that in some ways is very mundane, and in other times is very fantastical. I kept flipping pages to find out how all these threads tied together. Ha! I see what I did there. There's Corel, the meek and a bit clumsy when startled fledgling mage. Delanil, who is something of a berserker. I hesitate to call him a knight or paladin. Kendra, the female thief who can definitely take care of herself. And I so appreciate this. I mean, hallelujah! Overall, the bard, who is a bit more than he seems, and hopefully will return. Blacksmoke, Kendra's rival and fellow thief. Lastly, there is Arcturus, a type of priest who may have answers, or just more questions. 
and all of these characters are important to the story as they encounter and part ways with each other. Each of their abilities and the things they know are ultimately tied together at the climax of the story. They're all useful, even when they aren't a party. This isn't just Corel's journey. They're all on a journey. Bad things are happening, and they have to find out why. What really happened 200 years ago? No one knows, and that's worrisome. There are some clearly lampshaded D&D style scenes in the book, including the first chapter in the bar scene. I love the description. I never felt like I was in a blank white room, unless the room was described as blank white. The action scenes were well thought out and written. I started to really feel the tension towards the ends of the book. Things were finally coming together. So why four ginger snaps? Two things. The third person limited omniscient viewpoint for chapters, where the main characters are together, is hampering the storytelling. You've got the main characters together in a scene, you've been in the other character's head before, but now you've got one character wondering what is going on with the other, and instead of jumping over and finding out, you're stuck. Look, I get it. Third person limited omniscient is the viewpoint of the 20th century. But I want to know the other person's thoughts, Kevin! Especially if they are main characters. Secondly, the telling. Oh my god, there is a lot of telling in this book. Some of it is style, because it's a very fluid type of I'm telling the story style. And in some areas, it works really well. But there is a lot of passive voice and a lot of being told emotions rather than being shown emotions. We're definitely both told and shown character traits, and I appreciate that. It's more or less I, as a reader, need to have a more active voice. To be slapped in the face with these characters' emotions through physicality and being seated in their bodies and the environment around them. These characters were supposed to be missing home and feeling lonely and uncertain about their futures and sometimes downright terrified and I didn't feel it along with them. This is difficult to do. Sometimes the story didn't need me to feel the emotion because, again, it was about the journey, not an in-depth character coming of age type of story. At least, not as written. Other times, I really wanted to feel that gut punch. And to feel it, I just needed some active voice. Less to be verbiage, please and physical reactions of tightening chests, burning eyes, tight throats, maybe some memories or fragments of what they've lost. It really comes down to what I call character relatability. While I was told they missed their old lives, I wasn't shown anything that sparked them to think that. Did the children playing tag spark a memory? Was there a scent? If the main character misses these people, we have to be shown enough of it, even in bits, for us to care. A paragraph or two flashback is all that it would take at different points. Otherwise, I mean, I really did keep turning those pages because I was enjoying myself and wanted to see how everything tied together. And I think Sean showed real discernment on what events needed to be shown and what events didn't to get the story across. I'm going to put the next books on my wish list for when I have money. And as soon as number four comes out, that goes on the wish list too. The Call of Chaos is a fun, epic, fantasy-style adventure that has a great journey that builds up to a tense conclusion with an ending that makes me want to grab the next book immediately to find out what happens next. Ah! <sighs> if it sounds at all interesting to you, then you may enjoy this book. You can find it on Amazon. Purchase link in the description below. Enjoy this review? Please leave me a comment, a like, or hit that subscribe button to be notified for the next video. As for this channel, I'm doing this on my own time with my own funds. I have set up a coffee account, and any funds donated towards the coffee will be used towards buying more books to review. The link to my coffee is in the description below. Every bit helps. Thank you! You can find me on Twitter at Ginny Zero, or at my website ginnyzero.wordpress.com That's Ginny, the number zero, dot wordpress, dot com. There, you can find out information about all my upmarket fantasy and military urban science fantasy books, as well as the review guidelines for this channel.
If there's a book you want me to review, please leave me a comment with a link to the book or contact me through my website. All suggestions welcome. Next time, my lovelies, I'll be reading or reviewing something. I'm feeling better, but I'm not sure what book in the pile I want to read next. See you in the next video!